Happy September, you guys. I'm back here at Walmart. It's been a while since we've been through Walmart and we're gonna go in there and check out the skincare. Anyways, if you like these kinds of videos, give this one a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed and you've got your little bell notification on. That way YouTube will let you know when my videos go live so you don't miss them. Anyways, let's head on in. So I have a video comparing CeraVe and Cetaphil with the Equate dupe. So definitely make sure you check those out because Equate is not sleep in when it comes to getting their formulas right at least in terms of the moisturizer but look what is new from rock they have a new bougie looking retinol line derm correction fill and treat serum you can diy your own filler all right so rock is actually pretty good in terms of their retinol retinol has to be converted by your skin into the active form so it's a little bit more slow to start working in comparison to prescription tretinoin but long term it can improve the look of wrinkles fine lines it also can improve hyperpigmentation if you're acne prone and your acne heals with a dark mark retinol may help improve that it also can help in inhibiting the enzyme tyrosinase and its activities and leading to upregulation of pigment. And then hyaluronic acid is a humectant. It will help hydrate the stratum cornea. Long term, that's gonna improve the natural exfoliation processes of the skin. It also has ascorbic acid. Huh, wonder how stable that is. That is vitamin C. And vitamin C, ascorbic acid, it's not the most stable ingredient. It's tricky to formulate but there is good evidence that it can improve collagen production in the skin and that it also can improve hyperpigmentation. This looks like a promising formulation. Okay, so $24.94. Then they have an advanced retinol and sortiamarin, I have no idea what that is, cream. So this was a serum and this one is a cream. Now, I suggest choosing one form, whether it be your cream or the serum, choose one. I wouldn't use multiple and layer them because that will just increase the chance of irritation and it's not gonna get you anything additional. Likewise, if you're already using a prescription retinoid, it doesn't behoove you to add in retinol. It's not gonna add anything, it just increases the risk of irritation. Like some people ask me, I'm getting a lot of irritation from prescription tretinoin. That is common, it's to be expected in the beginning. And to combat that, you're often instructed to back down on the frequency of using it from, instead of using it daily, to use it every other day, at least in the beginning, to combat the irritation. So I'll often get the question, should I use a retinol on those off days? No. Retinol is just gonna increase the risk of irritation. It's not gonna add anything into the mix. It's just gonna complicate things for you. Anyways, all that to say, choose one form, they have the cream, and then they have this more lightweight, presumably, serum. I'm wondering how this compares to my favorite retinol cream, the Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Cream. It's kind of looking like it may be competitive with that. This one has 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid. So this one has actual ascorbic acid, whereas the cream has 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid. That is an uh, ester, vitamin C ester, not um, evidence base for improving collagen production, like ascorbic acid. What else does this have? Glycerin, that's a humectant. Sodium hyaluronate, again, is going to help with um, moisture content in the stratum corneum, smoothing out wrinkles and fine lines. And then they have, what is this one? This is just a refillable cartridge. Interesting. So this is a, oh, okay. So you buy this once, and then this is the refill, $20. So you, huh, interesting. This does look like it cuts down on packaging. You have to give them that. It does look like it cuts down on, on waste. Oh my gosh, you guys. Neutrogena, I had no idea that they came out with this. Hydro Boost Glycolic Acid Overnight Peel, fragrance-free. Now glycolic acid, is an alpha hydroxy acid. Of the alpha hydroxy acids, this is the smallest in size, so you can penetrate a little bit more deeply. It all depends though on how the product is formulated overall. If you just look at this and say, oh, 10% glycolic acid, I'm already, I've used a 10% glycolic acid product in the past. This should be the same. False, because the formulation overall will dictate the free acid value of 
glycolic acid in terms of how well it's going to exfoliate. Glycolic acid also helps with moisture retention. It's a humectant. It's good for improving hyperpigmentation. However, if you have a deeper skin tone, you kind of have to be careful with glycolic acid because it can be too irritating and that can actually put you at risk for hyperpigmentation. So if you have a deeper skin tone, be careful. What else does this have? And hyaluronic acid, which I'm presuming this has, can increase the penetration of glycolic acid. Oh, did they give you instructions? Cleanse, treat, moisturize. After cleansing at night, apply with cotton pads, avoiding the eye area. Yeah, you definitely want to avoid the eye area with this because the eyelid skin's pretty delicate. It can be too irritating there. Allow it to absorb and then follow with a moisturizer. This may sting when you put it on, just as a word of warning, it may sting. And then you need to be careful, make sure you're wearing sun protection, sunscreen, because um, glycolic acid can make you a little bit more vulnerable to the sun. Glycolic acid is helpful not only for skin texture, hydration, it's also good if you have keratosis pilaris on, this, on the cheeks. Now, we were talking about retinol earlier. Retinol is something you put on at night. This is a product you're gonna use overnight. However, the combination of like the retinol cream and this together, like using them both at nighttime, putting this on and then using, say you picked up that retinol moisturizer. You would not want to use this and then layer that retinol moisturizer on over it. can be a very irritating. So be careful, retinol plus glycolic acid can be a really irritating combination. How often do they tell you to do this? Ooh, look, they even warn about the tingling. All right, so they tell you if you experience sensitivity, reduce the frequency of use until your skin adjusts, then revert to daily use as tolerated. If you're using a retinol uh, for anti-aging purposes, you could use it like three nights a week, and you could use this the other nights a week, depending on how you tolerate it. You don't necessarily need to use these ingredients daily in order for them to work. It's more about what is gonna work out for you in terms of what you tolerate and what you can keep up with. Looks like Neutrogena came out with a new niacinamide serum. 10%, that's kind of high. Research uh, shows benefit with uh, upwards of 5%. Higher than 5% can end up being more irritating, but a lot of people tolerate higher percentages with no issue, that's fine. Niacinamide's great. It's been shown to help with the skin barrier. It's helpful for oily skin, can um, possibly help in minimizing acne breakouts and it can help with hyperpigmentation and redness. And if you have acne prone skin, it's a good idea if you tolerate niacinamide to just choose a moisturizer that has niacinamide in it because it's going to be helping you presumably with your acne as well as any post acne dark spots or post acne redness. You don't necessarily need the separate serum though. I mean, if you wanna use it, great, because a lot of moisturizers already have niacinamide in them. I love this body moisturizer too from Neutrogena. It's really great, non-sticky, non-greasy. I use it on my face as well. This is new, the Soothing Milk Cleanser from Hydra Boost. I'd love to try that out sometime. I really like this hydrating gel cleanser though. These were new a few years ago, like two years ago, the Skin Perfecting AHA, PHA blend. PHA is polyhydroxy acid, very gentle exfoliant but mostly hydrating. Good for hyperpigmentation. New from L'Oreal, microhyaluronic acid plus ceramides line plumping water cream. This actually looks promising, although, what is it, $26? Whew, that's expensive. Looks to be like a gel cream though. Comment below on if you've tried that. Ceramides are helpful for the skin barrier. Sodium hyaluronate again, humectant. Their hyaluronic acid serum is, you know, good. I, okay, so I have this currently. It's good, this hyaluronic acid and caffeine eye serum. Caffeine applied topically may temporarily improve the look of um, dark circles, kind of brighten things up. And this is actually pretty nice. It has this applicator, although I worry that there's probably some nickel in this. And if you're really sensitive to nickel, many people are, it could actually contribute to, um, eyelid dermatitis anyways. So it's got this cool applicator and these balls roll the product. But here's the thing, there's actually too much product in this tube, in this jar, in this bottle. Like it's too much because you barely need any. This does such a great job dispensing exactly what you need that there's just like tons left. I mean, it's going to take eons to get through. 
and I think it's too much in and out. You know what I mean? Because obviously you use it when the skin is clean, but it just seems like a lot of in and out. And so for that reason, I think they should sm sell smaller little containers of it. It's just my opinion. Looks like they came out with a new vitamin C serum and they added salicylic acid. They also have, it also has fragrance in it. But it's ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid though, again, difficult to formulate so that it actually gets into the skin and does anything. 12% is a reasonable percentage and the salicylic acid can also help with hyperpigmentation. That's kind of what a product like this is is going to be likely more helpful for pores possibly the vitamin c may help reduce oxidation of your sebum and reduce acne in theory but that's all a lot of hand waving it all depends on how well this is formulated but l'oreal is got a massive r d cut behind it i mean it's huge and they really take things seriously when it comes to the science behind there. I know that sounds commercial, me saying the science behind, but they actually do. Um, I have a lot of confidence in L'Oreal skincare products. CeraVe, La Roche-Posay, L'Oreal, Skin Dudicles. <laughs> um, and what's the other one? Vichy. Shout out to those of you with Sjogren's Syndrome. Uh, I know a few of you do. Um, dry mouth is part of that. These oral lozenges are helpful for the dry mouth situation. Speaking of Sjogren's Syndrome, we've got dry eyes. That condition and then if you're taking Accutane, it will make your eyes dry while you're on it. And um, now using topical retinoid, uh, in theory, can lead to dry eyes if you get it near the eye. I have a whole video explaining this, so definitely check that one out. But I want to come over here because one of the issues with eye drops is you can actually develop problems with the preservatives. You can develop an allergy to them, cause eyelid dermatitis, and the preservatives also can disrupt your tear film, and that can contribute to chronic dry eyes. So, look for preservative-free eye drops. Specifically, this preservative, benzalkonium chloride, it can contribute to chronic dry eyes if you use a lot of eye drops, and it also, you can develop an allergy to it, and that can lead to eyelid dermatitis. Yeah, these by, you can use the Equate version. Here's what I'm talking about, the preservative-free lubricant eye drops. This will help with dry eyes um, if you're on Accutane or if you have dry eyes, which is really common. It's common as you get older. I rather enjoyed this product, the Hydrating Lip Sleeping Mask. I think of all of Neutrogena's products, the Hydro Boost line is my favorite. This is like a very thick ointment almost. It's kind of, I would say, maybe similar in consistency to the Laneige product, but in a tube like this so you don't have to stick your fingers in. I know the Laneige product comes with a Scoopy Doodle and there's no fragrance in this. This Niacinamide PC Pore Vanish Purifying Toner Alcohol Free Fragrance Free Oatmeal Extract that can be hydrating Rice Bran Moisturizing Tea Leaf Niacinamide those are good for oily acne prone skin now, witch hazel is an astringent. It can be soothing, but some people, it's irritating for their skin. So be aware of that. Here we are in the foot creams for dry cracked feet, which as a side note, if you have dry cracked heels, that is a risk factor for foot fungus. If you walk around barefoot, especially diabetics are more prone to dry cracked heels due to issues with circulation anyways um this as you guys know is one of my favorite favorites for dry cracked feet um the carousel intensive foot repair it has urea in it very good for softening callus however if you especially if you're a runner be careful not to use this like daily because it can end up being too good and you end up with blisters. A couple of times a week is great, but it really smooths everything out. Anyways, I'm over here and I see that Dr. Scholl's has come out with what looks to be new foot creams. Professional strength, 25% urea. Again, that's really good for softening callus and improving cracked heels. 
essential oils aren't going to do anything. Um, although, honestly, there is some data that tea tree oil can help to cut down on the risk of foot fungus and toenail fungus. This has, doesn't look like it has tea tree oil in it, but it does have peppermint, lavender, eucalyptus, spearmint. That's just gonna make it smell nice, whatever. The urea is what's really doing the bulk of the work here. On the bottoms of the feet, the skin, the stratum corneum is so thick that contact dermatitis to essential oils is less common, but if you are allergic, you've gotta be careful. Um, what is this one? This one has alpha hydroxy acids instead, which alpha hydroxy acids? Oh, it also has urea, lactic acid. So that's kind of similar to the carousel. Lactic acid is a um, alpha hydroxy acid that is helpful for exfoliating heaped up dry skin and improving the moisture content of the skin. And then we also have Profoot Super Crack Cream. Heal Rescue, AHA blend with shea butter, fragrance free, um, urea, lactic acid, this one, this one's not fragrance free, it says fragrance free, see that's not a regulated statement, this is why, look, and then you turn it over and fragrance is on the ingredient list, like anyways, if you're allergic to fragrance, you've got to read ingredients because fragrance free, sometimes they, they're, I guess they mean unscented, which, yeah, anyways. Uh, this otherwise looks fine unless you know you're allergic to fragrance and you've been misled by the, <laughs> the label. What is the Flexitol Heal Balm? Visible results in one day. Super concentrated moisturizer, exfoliator. This one is urea. Lanolin is moisturizing, but some people are allergic to it. It comes from sheep's fleece. Now this one has tea tree oil in it. And it has glycolic acid, an alpha hydroxy acid that may help soften the built up stuff. Dr. Teal's has a softening rem remedy with aloe and coconut. See, why does this look like it has a little bit of a grit to it? Oh, pure Epsom salt. So maybe for softening and exfoliating. Yeah, I would still go with carousel. It really gets the job done. And then, what's the foot cream version? Moisturize and soften. Maybe it's got a little bit of grit to it with the Epsom salt in there. Currently I have an extra thick callus between my toes where I've had some overlap. So I might actually get these. 40% salicylic acid. This would also be good if you have a wart. Um, and it looks like there's some cushion to this too. So it would be good if you have like a wart on the bottom of your foot to help Hasten clearance of the ward. Dr. Scholl's also has these callus remover salicylic acid in this gel form. Um, that would be helpful. Yet again, Walmart did not disappoint. I'm gonna wrap this video up here. If you enjoyed it, on the end slate, I'm going to put one of my more recent Walmart Shop With Me videos so you can check out what was in here last time that I talked about. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.